Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we are going to talk about ATXL International AS and A Levels Pure Mathematics 4. In this lecture, we'll continue with Chapter 6, Integration. So in this lecture, we are going to learn um, an integration technique, which is called integration by parts. So what does integration by parts mean? So let's think about if we have two functions of x, so the first function is called ux, and the second one is called vx. Okay, so if we want to do the derivative of the product of these two functions, so this one should equal to the derivative of u times v, and plus u times the derivative of v. So this is for the differentiation. So if we want to do the integration of this ux um, prime x, sorry, if we want to do the integration of u prime x times vx plus ux times v prime x, right? So this one should equal to ux times vx and plus a constant c. Okay, so here we can separate this into two parts. So it will be u prime x vx integration and plus ux v prime x integration. So this one equals to ux times vx plus a constant. Okay, so the integration of u prime x times vx, so this one should equal to ux times vx and minus the integration of ux v prime x plus a constant. So this is called integration by parts. Okay, so let's just take a look at one question. So the first one is from the exercise 6D, question 1A. So if you want to do the integration of x times sine x, so how do we do this? Okay, so we can look at this one and compare with this um, left hand side of the equation. So we'll have sine x equals to our u prime x and vx equals to our x. Okay, so from here we know ux will be negative cosine x, right? Because its derivative is sine x. Okay, and also we know the derivative of v with respect to x is just 1. Okay, so here we can just use the formula, right? So we will have ux times vx minus integration of u x times v prime x and plus a constant. Okay, so as we just talked, ux equals to negative cosine x and vx equals to x. So this will be negative x times cosine x and minus integration. So here ux, we know it's negative cosine x and v prime x is just 1, so times 1, and then plus a constant. So this one equals to negative x cosine x, and then plus, so this will be sine x, and plus a constant. So that's how we apply this integration by parts technique to solve this problem. So maybe let's take a look at another question which is still from exercise 60, question 1b. So here we have x, e, x, dx. Okay, so for now, I will write the equation out. So u prime times v. So this one equals to u times v and minus the integration of u times v prime, right? Okay, so here, which one can be our u? Which one can be our v? So because if you look at this one here, it's u times v prime. So maybe we will let v be x, and u prime will be e x. 
So from this one, we know u will be ex and v prime will be 1. Okay, so now we can just plug in here. So u times v, which is x times ex, minus integration ux times uh, derivative of v. So this is 1. Okay, so this one is just x ex minus ex and plus a constant. Okay, let's try another one here. So we'll have this uh, maybe e, question 1e. So we have x sine square x dx. Okay, so which one do you want to choose as u and which one do you want to choose as v? Okay, so for this one, so let's just look at this 1 over sine square x. So this one just equals to cosec square x. So if you look at the formula book here, so the integration of cotangent x, oh sorry, the differentiation of cotangent x will be negative cosec square x. Okay, so from this we know the integration of sine square x will be negative cotangent x, right? So in this case, we will choose our u as, as our u prime as 1 over sine square x. So we'll have our u equals to negative cotangent x. And v here will just be x and v prime will be 1. Okay, so this one, we have u prime times v. So this equals to u times v negative x cotangent x minus, so u here is negative cotangent x, and then we have v prime, which is 1. Okay, so we have negative x uh, cotangent x minus, so here uh, actually it's plus, cotangent x is cosine x over sine x dx, right? So we know if we differentiate ln sine x, so its derivative will be sine x cosine x, right? So this one will be negative x cotangent x plus ln sine x and then plus a constant c. So that's how we do question e. Okay, so now let's look at question 2. So here we want to find out the integration of 3 ln x dx. Okay, again, I'll just write the formula for now. So we have u prime v. So this one, integration equals to u times v minus integration of v prime times u. Okay, so here, which one can be our u? Which one can be our v? So probably we will let our v equals to ln x and u prime equals to 3. So from here we know u should equal to 3x and v prime will be 1 over x, right? Okay, so this one will be u times v, so 3x ln x and minus. So v prime here is 1 over x and u is 3x. So we'll have 3x ln x minus 3x plus a constant. So that's for question 2a. How about question 2b? So if we have x ln x dx, so this time we can let our v be ln x and u prime be x, right? So we'll have our v prime equals to 1 over x and u equals to x squared over 2. Okay, so this one again, u times v, so x squared over 2 ln x minus v prime 1 over x, u is x squared over 2 dx. Okay, x squared over 2 ln x minus, so this will be x over 2 dx. So I have x squared over 2 ln x minus, so this should be 4x squared and plus a constant c. Okay, so we can try another one, so 2d. So if we want to do the integration of ln x squared, so what can we do? Okay, so here, let's just think about which one can be our v and which one can be our u. 
So maybe we'll let our v be ln x and u prime be ln x again. Right, so here we may have a problem because we don't know what will be u. Because the derivative equals to ln x, we've never learned about this. Okay, so if that's the case, maybe we change the strategy a little bit, right? So this is just like uh, we keep trying, right? So we'll have our v equals to ln x squared. And u prime equals to 1. Okay, so what will be our v prime? So v prime will be 2 ln x and times 1 over x. And u will be x, right? Okay, so if we try this one, we don't know if it works or not, right? We can just, just write this one down. So x ln x squared minus v prime. So will be 2 ln x over x. u will be x. And here is dx. So we have x times ln x together square minus 2 ln x dx. Okay, so here, what is the integration of ln x dx? Actually, we talked about this in the first example. So this one, we have integration of ln x equals to, so basically we just divide 3. So x ln x minus x, right? Okay, so this one will be x ln x together squared minus 2 times x ln x minus x. And of course, we need to plus a constant. Okay, so um, for this type of question, it's quite easy to check if our solution is correct or not, right? So what you need to do is just differentiate what you have got. Let me just write this one down here. 2x ln x minus x plus constant. Okay, so let's differentiate. So for the first one here, so we can uh, use the product rule. So it will be ln x squared plus x times 2 times ln x and times 1 over x. And here we use product rule again. So ln x and plus x over x and minus 1. Okay, so this will be ln x together squared plus 2 ln x minus, this is 2 ln x. Oh, sorry, here should be, give me one second, when I open the bracket, here should be plus 2x. So this one, I think, should be plus 2. Right? Okay, and then minus 2 plus 2. So all cancel, right? So it's just ln x squared, which is correct. Okay, so let's try another question. So this question is uh, on page 80, question 3b. So we want to do the integration of x squared um, cosine x dx, right? Okay, so how do we do this one? Again, so let me write this one out, u prime v equals to uv minus integration uv prime, right? So which one can be our u? So maybe our u prime will be cosine x and v will be x squared. Why I want to choose this? Because I just want to find out a u. So if I choose u to be u prime to be x squared, maybe the u is more complicated, right? Because we have x cubed over 3 as u. So this one will make things slightly easier. So u should be sine x, and v prime will be 2x. Okay, so u times v, 2, oh sorry, x squared sine x minus integration sine x, and then here we have 2x. Okay, so we have x squared sine x minus 2, x sine x dx. So I'm just copying this one. So we look at this one again, right? So here we need to use the integration by parts again. So which will be our new u? So in this case, we'll have our u prime equals to sine x and v equals to x. So we'll have our u equals to negative cosine x and v prime will be y. Okay, so we'll have x squared sine x minus 2. So here, u times v again, so negative x cosine x minus, so this one will be 
uh, u, which is negative cosine x, and v prime is 1. Okay, so this one will be x squared sine x plus 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x and plus a constant c. And we are done. Okay, maybe we can try another one. So it's question 4b. Um, let's try a different one, sorry. So maybe we try g, 4g. Okay, so here we want to go from 0 to pi over 2. And then we have sine x ln sec x dx. Okay, so how do you want to do this one? Again, we need to find our u, we need to find our v, right? So u prime, maybe we try sine x, because we can easily get u, which is negative cosine x. And v, we have ln sec x, right? So what will be our v prime? So here, um, we know v prime equals to sec x inside here, and then we have sec x tangent x, so it will be tangent x. Okay, so this one we have u times v, so we have negative cosine x long sec x, right? So here we need to write as from 0 to pi over 2. And minus, so integration of u times v prime, so which is negative cosine x, which is u, times v prime, which is sine x over cosine x, right? So this canceled out. So here will be plus sine x dx. And x here is from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so for the first part, so we have negative, if we plug in negative pi over 2 here, cosine x, cosine pi over 2 is 0. So minus, so we plug in 0 here, right? So it will be ln sec 0. What is sec 0? So this is uh, sec 0 equals to 1. So this is just 0. And so for here, it's negative cosine x, and x is from 0 to pi over 2. So it will be negative cosine pi over 2 and plus cosine 0. So it's just 1. Okay, so we're done with this question 4. Let's try another one. So this is on page 81. Question um, 6. So we want to calculate this one. Okay, so how do you want to use integration by parts? So let's try again, right? So we have u prime v equals to u times v minus integration u times v prime. So which one can be our u prime? So maybe we just let our u prime be 1 and v equals to square root of 8 minus x. So we have u equals to x, and v prime equals to 1 over 2, and we have 8 minus x and negative 1. I don't know if this one works or not, but let's just write this one out. So we have u times v, and minus u times v prime. So we have x to square root of 8 minus x dx. Okay, does this one work? Uh, we don't know, right? Actually, um, so how can we do this one? Okay, so did you notice something? Actually, why do we want to use the integration by parts? Actually, we can directly calculate the integration of 8 minus x. So this one should equal to what? So think about 8 minus x, 3 over 2. So if we do its derivative, this one equals to 3 over 2. 8 minus x, 1 over 2, negative 1. So that's exactly the thing here. So this one is negative 2 over 3. 8 minus x, 3 over 2, and plus a constant c. Okay, so what does this question tell us? So this question just tells us that sometimes we really don't need to use the integration by parts, right? So before you start trying, just think about if you can use some basic methods or techniques to find out the solution rather than just every time you see this question, we just use integration by parts and then make it more complicated. Okay, so here, next one, question 6b. 
So we want to, this time is integration by parts. So x minus 2 square root of 8 minus x dx. So we want to do this one. Okay, so how do we do this? So we can separate this into two parts first. So minus 2. So here will be 8 minus x dx. And for this part, we know already, right? So from the previous question, now we can focus on this one. So we'll let our u equals to, as our u prime equals to x, and v equals to square root of 8 minus x. So u will be x squared over 2, and v prime will be negative 1, 2, square root of 8 minus x. Is this a good idea? So again, we'll have u times v, right? So which or u times v prime as here, right? So this will make things more complicated. So this is not a good choice. So maybe we can use u prime as square root of 8 minus x and v b x. So v prime is just 1. So what will be u? Actually, we talked about this. So it will be negative 2 over 3, 8 minus x. 3 over 2. So that's what we got in the first part of this question. Okay, so we can focus on this one now. So we have u times v, negative 2x over 3, 8 minus x, 3 over 2. And minus, so here we'll have u times v prime, right? So v prime is 1, so plus 2 over 3, 8 minus x, 3 over 2. Okay, and also minus 2, 8 minus x, 1 over 2 dx. Okay, so here we can continue, right? So negative 2x over 3, 8 minus x, 3 over 2. Again, this one can be done with a very simple method, right? Because we know 8 minus x, 5 over 2. So if we do the derivative, it will be negative 5 over 2. 8 minus x, 3 over 2. So this one will be minus 2 over 3, 2 over 5, 8 minus x, 3 over 2. Oh, sorry, 5 over 2. Okay, and then finally for this one, because we got the result already, so plus 4 over 3, 8 minus x, 3 over 2, and then plus a uh, constant. Okay, so uh, if we try to group them together, so we'll have, um, let's try to group them together, right? So I have 8 minus x raised to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, and then maybe um, according to this question, so we can, how about this? Let's just, um, just take this one out from each of the terms, so negative 2x over 3. And this one will be minus 4 over 15. So we'll have 8 minus x and plus 4 over 3 and plus constant, right? So we'll have 8 minus x, 3 over 2. And then here we'll have negative 32 over 15. Why this one looks a bit strange? Um, give me one second. So it's negative 5 over 2. 8 minus x, 3 over 2, so 2 over 5. Um, yes, so this one will be minus 32 over 15. No, actually, give me one second. So if we do here, it will be negative 2x over 3 plus 4x over 15. So we have 15, negative 10. So it will be negative 6x over 15. Okay, so it will be negative, divide 3, 2x over 5. Okay, and for the constant part, so 4 over 3 minus 32 over 15. So it will be 15, um, 20, negative 12. So this one will be, um, divide 3, 4 over 5. Okay, so it will be negative 2 over 5, 8 minus x, 3 over 2, x plus 2, and plus c. So that's exactly uh, the one we need to prove for 6b. Okay, and for the last one, what you need to do is you just plug in 7 and minus um, the value you plug in 4, and we'll be able to do the 6c. 
Okay, so let's try uh, the last question here, which is question 7a. Okay, so here we want to find out the integration of sec um, square 3x. So usually for this type of question, what you need to do first is just look at your formula book. So in formula book, we have tangent kx derivative equals to k sec square kx. Okay, so in this case, you don't need to use integration by parts, right? So we have tangent 3x derivative equals to 3 sec square 3x. Okay, so this one will be, so this is 3 tangent 3x dx. That's it, right? So we don't need to um, use something more complicated. Okay, so for part B here, we want to find out x sec square 3x dx. Okay, so let's just write the integration by parts formula. So uv minus uv prime. So u prime, we can choose as uh, what? Maybe sec square 3x because we know u equals to tangent 3x over 3, right? And v, we can choose as x. So v prime will be y. Okay, so let's try this one here. So it will be u times v. So x over 3 tangent 3x minus, so we keep u here and v prime, so 3 tangent 3x dx. Okay, so what is tangent 3x here? So think about if we have um, tangent um, 3x, right? So this should be sine 3x over cosine 3x. So if we have ln cosine 3x, what will be its derivative? So it will be negative cosine 3x. And then we have this is sine 3x and 3, which is negative 3 tangent 3x, right? So here will be x tangent 3x over 3 minus, so this one will be negative uh, 9 long cosine 3x, right? And then we just need to plus a constant. Okay, so here will be plus. So that's how we do question B. Question C. So here we want to calculate the integration from, um, give me one sec. So here is pi over 18, pi over 9, right? And this thing, dx. Okay, so we'll have 3 x tangent 3x plus 9 long cosine 3x. So here x is from pi over 18 to pi over 9. So we have 3, 1, pi over 9. And tangent um, pi over 3 will be square root of 3 plus 9 long so cosine pi over 3 is uh, square root of 3 over 3, right? Okay, and minus, so we have 54 pi tangent pi over 6 minus 9 long and cosine pi over 6. Okay, so here we have 27 square root of 3 pi and plus so this one will be ln 1 over square root of 3 will be ln 1 minus ln square root of 3 which is negative 1 over 2 ln 3 so this can be negative 18 ln 3 right and minus so this one will be 54 pi tangent power uh, is square root of 3, so 3 square root of 3 minus 9. So cosine here will be 1 over 2 long uh, 3. Okay, so we'll have um, these two we put together. So 54 times 3. And the top will be 6. Uh, minus 1, so it will be 5 square root of 3, 1, 6, 2. Minus 18, so 9 
are long three. Oh, sorry. Actually, what I'm doing here, because long cosine pi over three. So here should be square root of three. And this one is cosine pi over six. So this one should be long square root of three over two. Okay, so these two terms are correct. And for this one, it's wrong. Let's just redo this one. So cosine um, pi over three. Cosine, so here is square root of three over two. Okay, so um, this, let's just look at these terms here. Sorry, it's a bit messy. So we, we just focus on these two, right? So we have long square root of three over two minus cosine pi over six. So here is 18 pi over 6, 9, pi over 3, cosine pi over 3. Oh, here's 1 over 2. Sorry. Long cosine pi over 3. Let's just write this one out. So we have, this is 9, long cosine pi over 3, which is 1 over 2, cosine pi over 6, square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so here will be 9, long uh, 3, negative 1 over 2. So it will be negative 18, long 3. Okay, sorry about this. So for these two terms together, right? So we have uh, 18, long 3. Okay, so this is basically calculation Um, because um, just make sure we don't make these mistakes. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam.